Scripture reading tonight will be taken from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will, be, you, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you bow with me? Lord, I thank you for this day, and thank you for the blessings that you put in our lives, and thank you for allowing us to be here tonight and come and worship you. And Lord, I ask that you be with those who are sick right now and help them to get back to full recovery and full strength. And Lord, be with us tonight as we take this lesson from Ricky and help it to let us gain something from it and put it into our lives. And Lord, I ask you to be with us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening, brethren and friends. We're happy to see you here on this Sunday evening. We're grateful for the opportunity that we have to meet together, to assemble together a second time today. We're thankful that you are here, that, uh, that you've chosen to be here, that you have a desire to be here, and certainly we're grateful uh, for this opportunity. I, I must say it's a little intimidating preaching on a uh, Sunday evening one week following our Thanksgiving service. Uh, I've, I'm still thinking about uh, what a wonderful uh, service it was a week ago today uh, and all who took part in it still hearing great things about it and uh, uh, so much so of maybe trying to do that more than once a year so uh, uh, I'm kind of sandwiched between uh, uh, the the service of Thanksgiving next week Lord willing will be the first Sunday of December so it will be our singing night and I was thinking I'm, I'm kind of sandwiched in between these two, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to stand here before you and uh, to uh, teach a lesson this evening. When you think about um, the world that we live in, it's an impatient world, is it not? People of the world are impatient. Oftentimes, we are as, as well. For some, you know, patience might come easier than for others, but uh, either way, from time to time, we, we all can seem to get impatient. Have you ever thought about the world that we would live in, what it would be like if it were full of patient people? If, if everyone in it were patient, if everyone in it uh, were to, to just think about the other first, if everyone were to be patient, could you imagine seeing patients at work? Could you imagine seeing patients at school? Could you imagine seeing patients at home? Could you imagine seeing patients uh, on the roadways and even patience in church because even again there sometimes we um, fall short open your Bible to Romans chapter 15 and verse 5 <clears throat> Romans chapter 15 and verse 5 patience is a Christian characteristic Christian characteristic as we noted just a moment ago in our scripture reading now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. He is our God of patience. He is our God of comfort, and we should be the same. This evening I want to take a few minutes with you and notice some areas where maybe we would all benefit to just slow down, to slow down in some areas. And no doubt you can add to this list. But I wanted to notice some areas in which maybe we should just slow down a little bit. Slow down and think before you pass up an opportunity that God has given you. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 8. 
As you think about the opportunities God gives us, God blesses us with opportunities. And, and they're, they're usually around us daily. And, and sometimes we just, we miss them. Sometimes maybe the opportunity will come back and present itself again, and sometimes it doesn't. There are opportunities usually around us. I heard an elder in the church while he was delivering a lesson. He said, my prayers used to be where I would ask God for opportunities. Then I realized I was having opportunities day in and day out, but I was not seeing the opportunities. I would think about it later. I think, oh, there was an opportunity to talk to someone. And he said, eventually I changed my prayer to ask God to help me to see the opportunity. See the opportunity before me when it is there, when it is present. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, beginning in verse 8, God will bless us with opportunities if we'll allow him to do so and if we will open our eyes to them. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. That great and effective door was there for Paul, but now, as we know, eventually it would close. That door of opportunity in Ephesus would close. So Paul had to take advantage of it while the opportunity was there. And when that door closed, he just went to the next one. And if that door is closed, he would go to the next one. But sometimes to see these opportunities, we have to just slow down and look. If we're not careful, we'll get so busy, so rushed. Of course, this can go a little bit with time management. But we'll get so busy and so rushed that we'll just pass them up and think nothing of them. Slow down as you see the opportunities around you. Open your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. Slow down and think before you give up on a lost person. I've heard stories of people obeying the gospel the first time they ever heard it. I've heard people in obeying the gospel when, when doing one-on-one -on -one studies. I've heard of people who obeyed the gospel and hearing it presented for the first time in a gospel meeting. And sometimes that happens. And, and, and it's wonderful when it does. I've been a part of studies where the person only needed a couple of studies, maybe two or three days a week at the most, before they put on Christ in baptism. They were that far enough along but I've been on other studies that have taken many months and even years we need to slow down and think before giving up on the loss now there might come a time where I have to move on so I'm not missing out on other opportunities I need to continue to go back when I can when I have opportunity and certainly pray for the person but be patient as you share the gospel with others in the book of second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 24 beginning and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Notice the servant of the Lord. He's able to teach. He's patient. It takes time. It takes time to... To, 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 to help someone to get from where they are to where they need to be, regardless of the subject. But certainly this is true in the matter of salvation, just the same. If it was as simple as just opening the Bible and say, saying, well, see, there it is, Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, then, then everyone would be obedient to God and put on Christ in baptism. But for some, it takes time. It takes a little more time, maybe from years of... Uh, other teachings that's in their mind or whatever the case might be it would take time and we need to be patient not give up on the lost I'm, I'm afraid that after one or two tries if we have not converted the person that we're studying with will say well there's no hope and move on but we must continue to study go to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 29 when you think about Slowing down in this life in some areas in which we would all do well to slow down. Slow down and think before you blow up at a difficult person. You know, this world is full of people, and we're all different. We had a, a, a lesson in our Wednesday morning Bible class a couple of weeks ago about difficult people. Dealing the great physician was our theme for this quarter, and, and we 
had a lesson on the great physician has answers when dealing with difficult people. And one of the things that we discussed in our Wednesday morning Bible class is that sometimes we're around other people who are difficult, but if we're being honest, sometimes we're the ones that's difficult. Sometimes I'm the one who is being difficult. You know, whether intentionally or not, that is just the way it is. And because we're all different, sometimes that brings about difficulties. We need to be patient with others. Patient with them when they're being difficult. Hoping that they're patient with us. You know, if you're the one being difficult. Patient with differences. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 29. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, we would all do well to read this book daily. Of course, it's 31 chapters. You might not read it all every day, but to read some of the Proverbs daily. We, we, we would all do, you, your life would be enriched if you would read at least one psalm and one proverb every day. One psalm, one chapter in the Psalms, one chapter in the Proverbs every day. This book, Proverbs, is giving us what we need for this practical daily living, practical uh, daily wisdom, and we would all do well. Another proverb in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. What is God concerned about? What is important to God? Again, you see the Proverbs writer is talking about if you're slow to anger, it's better than the mighty. How, how many have brought about harm, brought about trouble because they were not slow to anger? He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. You must have control over your actions and your reactions. And we need to slow down when we're around other people. We need to pray, pray daily. Help me when I'm around those that might be difficult or if I'm in a difficult situation, especially if you know you're going into a difficult situation. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. We see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. That's what God would expect of us. We need to slow down in being patient with others. Slow down and think about it before you give up in a situation of persecution or adversity. Open your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Slow down and think before you let up during persecution. As Christians, we will all suffer persecution. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Now, of course, the levels of persecution might be different from one area to the next, from one generation to the next. But yet there is still that persecution in which we will go through. I need to slow down and think before I give up. Slow down and think about it before I throw in the towel. Slow down and think of how do, I, how do I navigate through this to remain faithful to God rather than quitting, rather than stopping, rather than giving up. What am I going to do to come out on the other side of this as a faithful child of God? It, it starts again. It can go back to prayer because I know that I'm going to be persecuted so maybe I should daily pray that when I find myself in times of persecution that I will be faithful to God through such. Open your Bible to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. It's during the days of persecution. It's during the days of, of, of going through struggles, the going through the trials that I must really possess patience. That I must, I must go through it in a way of be determined to not give up. In Romans chapter 12, notice verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. What did our Lord do when you find 
him hurting, when you find uh, people rejecting him, when you find him in the garden before uh, the crucifixion, he was praying to God. He was praying to his Father. He was speaking to him often. In verse 14 of Romans 12, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Romans chapter 12, especially, really all of the chapter, but especially verses 9 through 21, that, that's a great section of scripture to read and to read often, to remind us as Christians what God expects of us. Again, verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. I wonder how many people have, throughout the ages have been brought to the Lord because when they were persecuting a Christian, the Christian responded in love. The Christian responded. There, there are so many stories that we know of right here in this area of the United States of uh, uh, people persecuting Christians and the Christians responding in love and the, peop the, the persecutors later converted to Christianity. Notice verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, verse 19, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire in his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I need to slow down. I need to slow down before I give up during persecution. I need to slow down before I even maybe not give up, but go against what God would have me to do during the times of persecution. How many times have people allowed others to control them? Someone says something to you, so you respond with similar speech. Someone, someone has a, an evil action towards you, so you respond with the same. You know, we, we are so easily controlled. And that, and that happens all the time. If we're not careful, we'll allow the evil people of this world to control us, to control our thoughts, control our words, and control our actions by simply responding to them in the same way in which they treat us, evil for evil. But the Bible tells us to be good to others, to do good to them, to feed them, to give them drink, to be kind to them. That person who is choosing to persecute you perhaps has never had an opportunity to be that close to a Christian before. Have you ever thought about that? It may be that the person who is persecuting you, the person who is trying to bring harm to you even, has never had an opportunity to be that close to a Christian. And here's the opportunity. How are you going to respond? How will we respond? Continuing on, slow down and think before you give up in the Christian race. You are simply trying to finish this race. We're not trying to be first. It doesn't matter if we're last. We're just trying to finish the race. We're trying to continue in the race. Open your Bible to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. And the joy of this race is, is you have a team. A team that is as strong as the brotherhood. Your, your immediate team is the local church here at Wood Avenue. But you have a team that is worldwide. You have a team that will pray for you. You have a team that will encourage you. You have a team that will say, let's stay in this race together. Slow down before you give up on the Christian race. Because what happens all too often is people will burn out. They're trying to sprint. And sometimes we even maybe try to do too much at one time. Yes, there's plenty of work that needs to be done and and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll sit back and not do anything. But we have to be wise as we go through this. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest in their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation chapter 14 
and verse 13. Slow down before you give up in this Christian race. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28 would remind us that it is a race that we run with patience. Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Have you noticed that what the Hebrews writer said in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28? Those who eagerly wait for him. Slow down and run this race with patience. Slow down as you grow in Christ. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading a moment ago was from 2 Peter chapter 1. Notice the bookends of this short book, of this three chapters. They be, it begins and ends with growing in Christ. Slow down to grow in Christ. To absorb what you learn. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word. That you may grow thereby. Take that milk of the word and begin growing. And never stop growing. Continue with the milk of the word. Continue to remind yourself of the milk of the word. Even as you develop into the meat of the word. It's so important that we remember those basics. But slow down and think about it as you learn as you grow in your grace and your knowledge. Hebrews chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Again, here's the Hebrews writer saying only of milk. Certainly we need to stay with the milk and keep the milk and continue on the milk. But you have a responsibility to develop into the meat of the word as well. You know, there's that need for Bible reading. There's that need for Bible study. There's that need for Bible meditation. We could all do well to begin today by reading one verse and then thinking on it throughout the day. Maybe going back and reading that one verse over and over and over and slowing down as you let it sink in. In verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 5, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Slow down as you grow in Christ. That rather than trying to do it all at once, trying to take on too much at once. Let it, let it come as you go through it slowly. Slow down Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Slow down to talk to God. Speaking to God is a blessing. When you pray to God, when you say, our Father in heaven, or Father, or God, or dear God, however you address him with Bible authority and all respect and all reverence, it is a blessing. God wants to hear from us. Slow down as you speak to him. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Take your time in prayer. Take your time to talk to God. Take time to think about what you're saying. I like to encourage from time to time writing out your prayer. Writing it out. Writing the words down on paper. And sometimes that will bring out thoughts that we won't always think about when just praying. Slow down as you give him the respect that he rightfully deserves. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you speak to the Father. You're speaking to eternal God. You're speaking to the one who created this world and all that is in it. Slow down. As you go through this, he does not have to hear from you, but he wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from us. He wants to hear from his children. Go to Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. Slow down as you develop your Christian characteristics. Now, now again, it, it, it's, a, it's a daily development. It's part of that which would continue on. As you, as you strive to develop, you know, certainly I need to be closer to God now than I was last year or five years ago or ten years ago. I need to continue to develop. 
But it's okay to, to slow down and develop a, a little work on something and then try to perfect it and then continue on to the next and next. I, I, I think if we're not careful, we just try to do it all at once and we just give up. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13, slow down as you develop your example. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. As you develop these Christian characteristics, as you develop your actions, think about it. Go through the Bible and ask yourself, where are the areas that I'm lacking? What is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to do different? Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Slow down as you develop your example. Slow down as you develop your actions. Go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Now, of course, this isn't to say that you can go about sinning and living your own life as long as you say, well, I'm doing it in the name of God. But it's saying, do what you do according to God's authority. Do what you do according to what the Bible allows you to do. Develop your actions Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. If I'm not careful, I'll completely miss the point of developing my actions. I'll get my priorities confused and out of order. And I will call myself a Christian but not live the Christian life. Finally, this evening, slow down as you develop your words. Open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Paul through the church at Ephesus said, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Changing words, changing even thoughts can take time. Habits can take time to change. Sin is oftentimes habit forming and I need to slow down as I'm changing my life changing the words of corrupt communication Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6 let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one here's an area especially where I need to slow down and make sure I'm developing the words that come out of my mouth in a godly way, trying to speak only with brotherly love and brotherly kindness. Because all too often I can ruin that example that we've talked about. I can ruin the actions that we've talked about. In the book of James chapter 3 beginning in verse 5, So the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. When you think about the Christian life, it, it, it is one of patience. It is one that where we must continue to move forward each day. This morning I asked you to think about all of the sins that you committed. If you could come up with that number, which would be possible to do. But think about what has gotten you to this point in life. Could you, could you imagine what the number would be if you knew every meal that you've ever eaten? Or if you knew every glass of water that, 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 you, that you've had throughout life. You see, you didn't do it all at once. You, you didn't just load up all at one time and say, okay, that's enough to, to get me through. And, and I'll never have to eat again. I'll never have to drink again. You, you take in a little each day. You take in a little each day to move forward. 
That's the way it is with the Bible. That's the way it is with developing your Christian life. You take in a little more each day. We're not careful. If we, if we try to do too much at once, or we try to put too much on ourselves at once, or, or if we try to give up, like some of the former points we were talking about, if we try to give up too soon, then we'll find ourselves missing what the Bible really is teaching us. This evening we're going to sing a song of encouragement as we turn it back over to, our, to Shannon, our song leader. We want you to think about the words of this day in Bible class and the sermons or this week in your personal studies and ask yourself, where am I? Where am I? What if the Lord were to return? You, you might look at your clock and say, hey, man, we're getting here a little sooner than I thought we were. The Lord might return a little sooner than we think he's going to return. What if it happened tonight? We don't know. But we do know it's going to happen at some point. What if my life, like the rich farmer that we talked about this morning, were to end tonight? Am I prepared? Are you prepared? If you're not prepared, we want to help you to prepare, putting on Christ in baptism or returning and asking God for forgiveness or whatever your needs might be, we want to help you to go to heaven. If we can do so, please come as we stand and as we sing.